by any belonging to the world is a space drawn at the reading of the said, um, of what the said says about his saying without saying what he's saying only by saying, uh, by saying he said. So, because I want to uh, bring back in the discussion the saying and the said, uh, mm -hmm. because I, uh, the distinct, uh, the problem of the language in Avinas, because it's not only about uh, this duality between saying and said, but I think it's about uh, trial, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, between uh, saying said and unsaid. Uh, I want to, uh, actually, I don't know what is the correct translation of the, the dear in, uh, and how it's translated in English. The dear? Uh, no, the dear. The dear. Ah, the dear. Yes, because it's uh, le, uh, le dear, le dear, yeah. uh, le, le dear. That is in a uh, sort of in between said. It's, uh, it's, that, it's that sense of re-saying, unsaying, revising, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, but I think that in French it's more, uh, it's more rich, the signification is more rich because the well, saying... Well, I don't know what he's talking about, but okay. Um, <laughs> yes, I want to bring that once again. Um, I uh, in discussion, so... Um, the intention of in between saying that is for me this is the interpretation that I find in English of the the dear can be said only as open spa open space where the saying succeeds to say to the trace that the lady or the infinite live uh, live in the cell. Um, Hold on, so they're saying that the dear the is the open space of the saying. Is that no? Uh, okay. So. <laughs> uh, the and so that for English it's a little bit difficult to, because I, I'm used to thinking uh, in French that you know, so uh, for me it sounds very very different uh, in English than <laughs> uh, than in French. I want to say that the the, say, the saying it's basically uh, lead lead us to a to a primordial language. It's the origin of uh, of the dialogue of, of the language for the so and it also uh, leads us to the uh, to the um, to the theme of the immemorial. Basically, uh, because the other is the source and the origin of any language, of any of uh, of any said. While while the said is um, at the level of uh, conceptualization, thematization, totalization. But the saying uh, being uh, a trace um, that I'm going to say later on that is developed on the face because uh, the, the face is a, is a write, is writing and as reading because the face is not a phenomenon on an image we cannot see the face uh, the face is ethical that means it's uh, it's a um, uh, contre uh, that's uh, something that uh, yes. uh, uh, it's something that against phenomenon so there is something, it's an enigma of course, and there's something that it always escape. So basically the word and the said, it's always doubled by his unsaid. Oh. It's going into the uh, uh, hermeneutical um, interpretation. <laughs> 
So, because for the Levinas, yeah, there is the origin of the language and of the discourse, is what I said, because he makes them possible. This is the reason why the said witnesses about its saying, even by missing it while the saying it said, at his turn, at, as in between said. Um, so, uh, this in between, this passage opened by the unification of the two traditions, because I relate to the saying. This is a person I want to um, rather to see my, uh, my vision about uh, this. Uh, I think. Um, makes a new interpretation possible of the Levinas thinking that no longer bears the seal of the ones exclusively over the other, so, but offers a new way, that is a way of the included middle. Um, for me, that is a reconciliation. So usually, because usually the Levinasian text is uh, catalogued as being to a radical transition line to postulate an uh, irreductible distance between the same and the other, between transcendence and immanence. Mm, but the saying communicates itself as a said, always is an in between said and denying his said. So you are uh, <laughs> going to. I'm going to um, so this, uh, this distance, this in between, and the interior of the saying and of the said is the only method of the saying to become accessible to the language. This relationship between, the, uh, between saying and said appears as a separation that develops itself as a permanent mix from the one to another. So then the meeting plays because they meet each other without uh, being separated. It's also the problem of the distance of the proximity in the renounce because the face, it's proximity, the other is next to me, but I can never touch him. So it's present as an, uh, it's present here, but it's, as an, it's absence at the same time. Um, so is an in-between said in a manner of uh, uh, in a manner of an included uh, third. Um, so I'm going to uh, to skip now. Um, um, so I think that in general, for me, the philo the Levinasian philosophy gains its true sense only when you take together, as I said, philosophy and Jewish thinking by overcoming them in the face reading, so escapes from any attempt of power or determination of any attempts to be closed in a dual, um, in a dual schema. Uh, skip. Uh, skip, sorry. <laughs> the Levinasian face remains uh, in, a shelter, uh, uh, in a shelter of any thematization because she, um, it is not a certain face, but a face but a, by excellence, a strange face about uh, from the philosopher speaks without naming it. So it said it comes from an original saying who speaks in the passage from beyond. And I'm going to quote here the Nas. Um, utter difference um, and conceivable in terms of formal logic is established only by language. Language accomplishes a relation between terms that breaks up the unity of, of a genus. The terms that. Um, it's right here in the. It's page 194. So the terms the interlocutors absorb themselves from uh, from the relation or remain absolute within relationship. Language is perhaps to be defined as the very power to break the continuity of being or of history. Uh, the incomprehensible nature of the presence of the other, which we spoke of above, uh, is not to be uh, described uh, negatively. Better than comprehension, this course relates with uh, what remains essentially um, uh, uh, transcendent. So, Levinas recognizes that uh, the face, as epiphany, manifests itself uh, on two levels. So I want to... That is, uh, Horizontally and vertically. That's again one of my uh, my intuition of one of my ideas. You can talk about it. First, the face develops itself in a cultural <coughs> and historical uh, environment. Here, the face becomes presence and an object for interpretation. That's what we're doing <laughs> in the philosophical discourse. And in, in uh, at, um, at this concrete level, the face receives a meaning depending on the cultural context in which it is uh, developing. So, and horizontally uh, coincides with the imminent phenomenality um, of the face, its appearance. Yet the face overcomes the uh, presence level, opening a vertical dimension 
uh, to this village, to, uh, to its surplus of sense, which escapes from any manifestation and immanence. Because uh, Levinas uh, analyzed many times that the face of uh, Epiphany is your visit. So the face is resting over, let's say, a primordial saying, who breaks any insignification given before for, uh, for sh uh, shining beyond, uh, beyond uh, inaugurated by the language, and which, is not uh, which, of course, is not outside the world. The, uh, the appearance of the face in Epiphany does not depend uh, of the significance received in the horizontal level. The face signifies to its own uh, nudity, which is no longer appearance, but the non-place place, as I call the revealing whole outside the name, space and time. Because its nothingness, as nudity, full of meaning, uh, its revealing void without reducing to nothingness, makes the whole nudity determined in, uh, in the world possible because the face does not belong, uh, that does not belong to the world. So I think that Levinas meets here and all the, um, an idea um, that is present in Giorgio Agamben, um, the Italian philosopher. So for Agamben, uh, the, strange, uh, the strangeness of, of the being is the condition of the manifestation um, of some being. I, I don't know exactly, uh, in Agamben the term is uh, Kelkonk, so that is, uh, I don't know how to translate. Uh, Anyone? Anyone. 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 Yeah, because the sort of um, manifestation of anyone being. Any being. Any being. Whatever is the term there. <laughs> 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 so any being remains foreign to the world and for the entire world, but he's living historically his strangeness in daily life. So we think, uh, I think that this any being of Adam Ben, um, it uh, um, uh, can be approached the, to the enigma of the Levinasian faith. So, um, the any being is a singular who escapes any gender or determined individuality, but is a part of a class and who makes possible the illustration of the class in Adam Ben. Um, and returning to Levinas, horizontally the face uh, develops in a cultural and social context and makes uh, that the saying of the art um, and the um, setting makes that the, uh, that the same of the other um, to happen vertically. But its original significance is not affected by the concept in which the face maintains itself. So, um, that, uh, let's say the expression of the face, his voice is not uh, is not annulled by, by, uh, by the flesh. Um, on the contrary, the, uh, the commandment that it's the biblical one, you shall not kill. Uh, it uh, transcribes and uh, subscribes and transcribes itself on the skin, uh, becoming uh, becoming the, the flesh. That uh, becoming the flesh. So the face, because it's visited and epiphany, so the and now. So the face, that you see in the sense dimension is uh, realized by starting with an obscure strangeness that opens the previous sense, intending to break it and for making it hurt. So the face overcomes any tentative of totalization, thematization, conceptualization, previously because it is always passed in a diachronic temporality coming from an immemorial, uh, immemorial past. Um, and I'm going to quote again uh, Levinas. Um, okay. um, speech cuts across vision. That is uh, the paragraph. A speech cuts, uh, uh, cuts across vision, in knowledge or vision, that objects uh, seen can indeed uh, determine, determine an act, but uh, it is an act that in some way appropriates the scene to itself, integrates it into a world by enduing it with a signification, and uh, in the last uh, analysis, analysis constitutes it. In uh, this course, the divergence that uh, inevitably opens between the other and uh, my team and the other and my interlocutor, emancipated from the team that seen a moment to hold him. Uh, for which contents the meaning uh, I um, ascribe to my interlocutor. So the formal structure of language oh, okay, see. Uh, thereby announces the ethical um, inviolability of the other and without any order of the anonymous, its holiness. And uh, here uh, it will be interesting to, to analyze or to discuss what is holiness in Levinasian 
what is what is mean that the shadow and the face it's it's holy. Um, uh, I think that in um, uh, in one of these interviews when uh, he was uh, uh, asked what is holiness again, he said to us more. He said that he's uh, recognizing uh, the recognition of the absolute other <coughs> in the other. So it's basically um, the recognition of the ethi uh, of the ethical level uh, in the other. Because uh, so. Um, Ethics is the connection of sanctity. Ethics is the means to recognize uh, the uh, the, set, the sanctity. But um, the problem that is here, how can it how can it be possible that the faith, which is always past, uh, and who witnesses a call that comes from an immemorial uh, past, can make itself a presence? Because uh, the face makes itself a presence to the call in the now, even um, if it remains past when we recognize it in the call. So, because we are always obliged to respond to the other, it's an extreme urgency which passes uh, in the immediately. In between the. Um, uh, so, because the Vinas himself defends the high of the face, being afraid not to contaminate it with the immanence and with the power of uh, conceptualization. Uh, there is a tension here, but uh, that doesn't mean that the philosopher poses tra transcendence to imminence. In a, um, because the height of the, of the faith becomes trace in, uh, in imminence. So, um, I, um, adding to this, we come, uh, we come in the listening of the call by situating us in a passage, so, uh, surprising uh, this call that makes itself a commandment. Uh, nevertheless, the questions persist in the face which is uh, a high in which it remains hidden, a height which uh, the consciousness will never have access because it comes from a time which cannot be an object of a memory, and how it is possible uh, phenomenology for uh, of the faith, who uh, is manifesting, uh, in manifesting at a cultural level to exist. How it is possible that the responsibility to which we are called to answer and to be a student, the iconic and commandment uttered by infinity, um, if our subjective frameworks of comprehension uh, don't succeed to understand, because uh, how can we speak about the face if the face is absent and past? Um, so it seems that the Avinasian is polarizing between those questions and can be understood only as ambiguity. The ambivalence of the Avinasian right and leads us certainly to an aporia which cannot be understood to, re uh, to, uh, to reasons as a level of the said. Um, so the only manner to understand it too is to accept uh, the, the strangeness, it's void, full of sense, uh, this any being um, that um, theorized by Adam, uh, by, uh, Adam um, the placing uh, The placing of the face in the infinite, uh, infinite transcendence beyond any conceptual system uh, preserves its glory and the distance from any corruption that uh, ensures the rightness of its words in a manner um, of a God coming in idea. Nevertheless, the conversion of the word in, re of, in the responsibility is just a passage of, uh, of an old place where the call and the answer meet. Um, as the philosopher underlines, uh, this uh, passage, this third way, is brought by the contradiction of the face, who is not identified um, with the call. Uh, with, with the world, uttered by the infinite, the face does not signify the infinite, but permits it to come to his whole, uh, other, otherwise to his non-significant significance, as strangeness and poverty. Um, I'm going to quote Levinas, the fact that the face maintains a relation with me by this cause does not make him in the same. He remains absolute within the relation. So the face uh, lets the other to come in the world to the void that represents it. The other manifests as, uh, manifest as a epiphany that interrupts the world uh, or there is a paradox. The non-significance of the face makes itself significant as a beyond being. The significant uh, non-significance of the face uh, keeps itself in the trace. The trace signifies in the world to, uh, to a beyond which brings um, its signification in the world maintaining itself beyond being, because the trace is maintained as a rupture at the level of the world, um, uttered by otherwise and being or beyond, uh, beyond answers. I'm going uh, to quote again Levinas, and 
Uh, the, uh, the facing position, the position by, par excellence, can only be um, as a moral uh, summons, if I pronounce it well. This movement uh, proceeds um, from the other. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, the idea of infinity, the infinitely more contained in the last, is completely produced in the form of a relation with uh, the face. And the idea of infinity alone maintains the extremity of the other which, with respect to the same, despite this relation. Thus, a structure analogous to the ontological argument is here produced. The exert of the being is inspired in its essence, but what is produced here is not a um, uh, reasoning, but the epiphany that occurs as a phase. Um, so, um, I'm going to um, come again to the concept of the trace, because the, the trace uh, is the one which um, um, Offers the subject the possibility uh, to offer to the subject the possibility to unify these two contradictory poles. At this, um, uh, yeah, here there is also a difference in, um, oh, between uh, la face and the visage. I don't know in English if there, if there is a ter another term uh, for visage than face. No. So, no. Because uh, no. uh, because uh, mm, because. Um, of course, uh, the, the visage uh, uh, and, uh, in French is uh, of, it's more it's uh, like tr transcendent. Also, it's not it's not the, the fl uh, it's not an image. It's not a concept, of course, you know. And the, the la, la face is uh, basically more like uh, uh, the physical aspect. So it is an image. It's, it's the signification it's, uh, that we. Um, um, uh, that we do, that we give to uh, uh, to, to, to the face. So you're making a distinction now between the visage and the face. Um, yes, I'm I'm changing to the concept of the face, but um, I, I I can't find the proper term in, uh, in English for well, it does kind for of work in English. I think what you're saying, you know, it's in poetry, you talk about things like grand visage. Yeah. Oh, you can say visage. You know, yeah. it's poetic. As I said, uh, uh, it's, you know, the face would be more physical form, the visage would be yes. uh, almost expression. Um, yeah. Countenance, yeah. countenance yeah. is the yeah. face yeah. with expression. Yeah. Yeah. But universally in everything else translations, it's just face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, so, um, okay. Uh, the trace is not the, uh, the correlation between the signification and its significance, but the spirit of both through the immemorial which is inacce inaccessible to the present consciousness. The, uh, the non-significance of the face is translated as a rupture of the immanence, by virtue of which the signification is realized, and then uh, the face remains in its straightness, safe from any, uh, from any disclosure. Um, hidden, um, hidden to the infinite is supposed to stay in the trace of the uh, infinite situated uh, uh, in the commandment to receive the other in the rightness of his face. Uh, we may say that uh, it's void. Um, um, his, uh, um, his otherwise, uh, the non-place, converts, uh, converts in the neighbor's look, in its call. So the face becomes the non-place place of the subject who remains uh, an and any one subject, or and any being subject, or and any being. And you can tell each other that. The national subject uh, is, um, or the self, is, uh, is a whole subject, a subject without the safety, which uh, the sole permanence is the permanence of its loss of self. Uh, I'm going to... The subject advanced by Levinas is no longer perceived uh, of him. Um, the subject is it's a loss of self in the sense of renunciation of the constitutive power, renunciation that represents the authenticity of the subject, and of subject uh, as a void. Because the stretching of the face um, as no significance constitutes the subject in moving from its prime position by determining it to lose itself in order to find itself uh, at the age of, an other, uh, of the other. A person... Um, uh, as, as void because um, I mean the, the subject of the self as hospitality is absolute uh, hospitality and um, openness. Um, 
because here's the third way brought, uh, brought by Levinas, it's an included middle. Um, a third of reconciliation, the way which, uh, which serve uh, to, a disposed, uh, to a disposed self. Um, yes. Uh, beyond, uh, beyond is a third person who, who remains in obscure strangeness. This is a person who refuses to be signified by a sign, who keeps the distance by position, uh, by opposition, even uh, transcendence, who offers them the possibility to be opposed and uh, reconciliate at the same time. Um, this, uh, the silence and the enigma they lay and the infinity become testimony by the transposition of the subjectivity. Um, uh, by the investment by the absolute otherness of the other in the other's, in the other's one otherness. So, because the third person is manifested in invisibly on the other's face. In lady states at the origin of, of my return to the other. On the other hand, the relation with the other can be a return uh, to the absolute other, towards the infinite. Uh, towards the infinite. Um, the impossibility to withdraw from the substitution of the subject by the other is transposing the ethical impossibility to withdraw from the other's core. Um, so in this context, to be, uh, to, be to, to be, or better said, to become a, a self means to be, uh, cho uh, to be chosen uh, maybe, uh, by, by the good and to become uh, responsible for, uh, for the neighbor. Um, the, uh, the equation of the, of the face signifies to his own life. The face is alive and, and empty. It is, a, it is a whole full of meaning. Um, uh, the face is uh, un, uh, unveiled by its own nudity. It is not an, uh, an apparition, but um, a non place, place outside any image, time, or space. Um, So, uh, uh, and I'm going to, to quote again, uh, it's not, not, uh, not in this passage. Uh, near, the, near the face, the, uh, the flesh becomes verb, uh, the caress saying. Uh, so, the, the flesh becomes verb, interpolation, in other words, face, uh, um, imposes itself, uh, face imposes itself as an impredictable manner to, uh, to the one which identified with the pleasure and economical life doesn't think of nothing else but himself. Uh, this flesh, uh, with, uh, uh, which uh, wears, uh, uh, interrupts the existence, bothering her violently and obliging not to be preoccupied by its own uh, welfare anymore. Uh, the opposition of economic needs uh, and uh, uh, needs and uh, uh, to an irreducible imperative of the responsibility. The face cannot impose a uh, the face can also impose a fight on me, a ruthless fight, even uh, if, it, uh, if it remains outside a force that a man can use in order to define uh, to defend himself. This fight always comes from the face, nudity, and enigma. The infinite expresses itself in a, in a primary way in the world by the introduction you shall not kill. Um, so, and uh, the transcendent face de declares us war. It proposes a terrible fight uh, with the flesh, with the same, similar, um, and similar, for instance, to the fight that Jacob had uh, with, uh, with the angel. Um, and I'm going to quote here, Bible Bible said, No, please, if I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand, for I have uh, seen, you, uh, seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God, and you have accepted me. Genesis uh, 33, 10. Who's talking to Jacob says this to the end. Yes. Uh, the, the face appearance uh, in the immanence provokes a rupture in the world and in the subject's interiority. So everything is happening. Uh, uh, and if. Um, uh, no, I say? Um, uh, the face appears in the immanence, provokes a rupture in the world uh, and in the subject's in, uh, interiority. So the, um, the, the face um, becomes another, another presence, a strange uh, presence that is my neighbor, not less access, uh, inaccessible, distant, or uh, at, uh, separated and invisible. Um, so a new insert between the I and an absolute him, says Levinas, a him who speaks from uh, the uh, from the depth of view, trans uh, transforming precisely the, the face uh, in, a, in a commandment in, a, in, in writing. Um, and I'm going to copy uh, to copy the mass. Um, 
uh, the face uh, the resists possession, resists my powers. Um, it needs to be funny in expression, the sensible, still gra uh, graspable, turns in, uh, into total resistance to the grasp. This mutation can occur only by the opening of a new dimension, for the resistance to the grasp is not produced as an insurmountable resistance, like the hardness of the rock against which the effort of the hand comes, uh, comes to not, uh, help to not. <laughs> like, uh, like the uh, like the remoteness of a star in the immensity of, um, of space. The expression that space introduces into the world does not uh, defy uh, the feebleness of my power of my powers, but my ability for power. The face still a thing among things breaks to the form, but nevertheless delimited. This means completely the face speaks to me and uh, thereby invites me to a relation, to a relation, uh, relation, uh, relation, uh, relation um, increments rate which, uh, to increment, to a relation increments rate, sorry, um, with a power is that uh, indeed in vain and or in knowledge. Um, so uh, the face is the one that introduces the discourse into the world. It is the one who gives testimony of the trace of the infinity. It is the passage. Um, the interruption of the discourse to the infinite trace does not signify the end of every uh, word, but re uh, reminds that the face language as a, uh, as a verb overcomes the conceptuality by renewing it, the conceptualization, the totalization. The uh, um is uh, content with searching. Uh, is content with searching the phrases where the significance uh, significance uh, becomes an imperative for the human being, up to the point of interrupting the lovers, obliging it to respond before uh, thematiz uh, thematiz uh, thematization, at the point of uh, reversing the course of the intentionality, because uh, the infinite affects uh, affects the thinking by reversing it in the call, the f uh, the phrase. Um, as, a, as the affectivity of sensibilities um, and as the one which introduces the discourse, it is at the, uh, at the same time that um, um, the, the passage at the limit of the visible and the invisible and uh, the one which receives the infinite, uh, the infinite passing, that is decided as a trace, as an enigma. The trace witness, witnesses um, um, of, the sub, uh, of the subjectivity, the infinite um, Awakes the, the 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 subject from its own from from its ontological dream, uh, for the purpose of opening it to a thinking otherwise than uh, otherwise than being the one which uh, disqualifies the, the conceptualization and the ontology in hope of liberation. So the face opens uh, opens a space uh, for uh, um, for listening. And I'm going to bring here another vessel from the Bible that is from. Uh, uh, and after my skin has been destroyed, and in my flesh uh, I see God. So it's, uh, 1926. Um, in other words, starting only with what is hidden from my flesh, or only from the interior depth of my flesh, it makes his high to uh, his high male and understood to me what is. Um, uh, so the, the call of the face be, uh, become, uh, becomes language. Well, I think that uh, totality and infinity can be considered as an analysis of the revelation of the infinity uh, for the face, which opens the original dis discourse, whose first word is an obligation that no majority can permit to avoid it. The emergence of the face, its appearance makes a strange and radical otherness to come out. To the face, the other learns and reveals what is not belonging to the ego level, because I'm separated at, uh, at the ego level, I'm separated and installed in atheism and in the ontological egoism, according to that. Subjectivity implies a losing of interest in oneself as a, and a sincerity and extreme passivity, a denudation, a a disposed self, uh, an action to be at, at uh, no, this is a pure uh, a pure exposure. Uh, questioned by the call, by the face of the other, the the, the ego, the eye is, is obliged to respond. The finance, um, uh, 
so the most vulnerable part of the subject, uh, the one who expresses the, the exposure in the society is the face. Uh, li uh, living a logical language, and that's what I'm saying, yeah, this other face. Um, okay. Um, uh, the face uh, appears to hearing and not to rational understanding. The, the witness, uh, the witness we, uh, um, witnessing the, uh, the awakening of the other represents the primordial form of the language. Um, so the face uh, defines itself as a face in the manner that it, uh, it does not uh, it house itself. Uh, the face feels the form that uh, pierces, uh, grows the form that uh, the form that sets boundaries to it. Dying represents in, rela in relation to the language. It's uh, it's presented uh, uh, as uh, in relation to the language as another way to access the face. It says in this passage that I choose. Uh, similar to the language, dying is another access to the face as long as it states its quality of otherness. Um, so we might say that the human being uh, who is face to face with the other's face has only two options, to speak or uh, to speak, to, to hear, to respond, or to kill. It is, possible, it is possible that dying helps us to approach the invisible of the face. Uh, in front of uh, that possibility that uh, the weakness of the other is shown, with, uh, is shown which in the structure of the face uh, reverses the weakness in high, uh, in high, where the face escapes beyond expression. So dying targets the face in the infinite of its uh, transcendence, where its autonomous is perfor uh, performed. Dying is the only, uh, is the only one which exerts the power over, it, uh, over uh, what escapes any power. So the face is still power because it expresses itself in the sensible, uh, in the sensible level, but already uh, helpless because it, it, inter it interrupts the sensible. Um, I'm going to quote it now. Um, and yet, in, uh, and yet, this new dimension opens, um, opens in a sensible appearance of the face. The permanent openness of the uh, of the contour of its form in expression increases the openness, which breaks up uh, form uh, in a uh, caricature. Uh, the face at the limit of holiness and, uh, and caricature uh, is thus still, in a sense, uh, exposed to power. In a sense only, the death. Uh, in a sense only, the death that opens in this sensibility modify, uh, modifies the, uh, the very nature of power, which uh, henceforth can no longer take, but can kill. Nor does still aims uh, at a sensible datum, and yet it finds itself before a datum whose being cannot be suspended by an appropriation. It finds affirmation, uh, affirmation. They can't. To kill is not to dominate, but to annihilate. This to, reno uh, to renounce comprehension absolutely. More to uh, exercise the power over what escapes power, it is still a power for the face which passes itself in the sensible, but already impotency, uh, because the face um, rends the, uh, the, the sensible. The alterity that is expressed in the face provides the unique matter possible for, uh, for total negation. I, uh, I can wish to kill only an existent, absolutely independent, which exceeds my powers infinitely, and therefore does not uh, oppose them to, par um, to, uh, to paralyze the very power of power. The other is, uh, is, uh, is the soul being, uh, being I can wish to kill. So, uh, when, um, um, uh, when the subject, uh, when, um, when the subject awakes, um, awakes, as it says, it says this consciousness, it has already a face, the face of the freedom, uh, the absence of the freedom to choose or to refuse a face is translated in relation with the other to sensibility and responsibility. Uh, it's too late every time, of course, for the subject to refuse his face, that is his responsibility. The non-intentional character of the ethical relationship uh, different, different, make, makes a difference um, uh, differentiates the Levinasian philosophy from other ethical system. Um, because the face is not a phenomenon, uh, it, the face is not a phenomenon because this transcendence does not constitute uh, in the representation horizon that what uh, makes the face to be less of phenom a less of phenomenon and weaker than an appear uh, appearance. The face is not shown in the visible of, of the skin. Uh, in a, it is nudity that hides the otherness beyond phenomenality as extreme nudity beyond exterior shame. So the face speaks. It invites, uh, it invites to a reading uh, when we hear its words, refusing any determination and conceptualization. Um, so 
or can say that the, uh, the and I can master that, but the whole human body is more or less a face because uh, it is uh, expressivity and, uh, um, uh, and and verbality. Um, so, um, so, uh, so the fa um, the, uh, the face skin uh, surface on which uh, the time writes its regrets is revealing to the other without holding contention. The skin is showing to uh, expose the invisible of the face. The face has a double uh, investment of the epiphany that permits it to overcome itself, broken between the visible and the invisible ru uh, rupture um, in between the aging of time and the diachronic sensibility, in between the passing of the infinite and his trace. Uh, the neighbor in the invisibility of his face becomes paradoxically the stranger, the radical other uh, who cannot appear in a phenomenal hypostasis, included from uh, the, uh, excluded from the contingency of, of dwelling. The, strangers, um, uh, the strangeness exposes the face uh, as a stateless uh, man. Um, because the proximity and the affection manifested in a diachrony which can be understood as a defect in the representation of the face, an epiphany of the sense beyond any context, an emphasis of the invisible uh, in the visible. The invisible as a measure, we, uh, as a ma uh, measure which cannot be measured of the face proximity disqualifies any attempt of uh, subscribing the face in an epic, uh, that's why I'm asking, an, an epic, uh, a geography dedicated dedicate to a social discourse. The face is said in his radical facility and marks the origin of the, of the psychic donation. Uh, uh, the responsibility of the subject uh, for the joy and the sadness of the other, a fraternity before the consciousness. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put, uh, to put it once again. Um, the infinite, uh, the infinite paradise is powered by its infinite resistance to murder, which firm and uh, in, in, in uh, gleams in the face of the other in the total nudity of his defenseless eyes, in the nudity of the absolute openness of the transcendent. There is here a, a relation not with a very great resistance, but with something absolutely other. The resistance of what has no resistance, the ethical resistance. The epiphany of the faith brings forth the possibility of uh, God in the infinity of the temptation to murder, to murder not only as a temptation to total destruction, but also as a purely ethical impossibility of this temptation and attempt. In the, resist, uh, in the resistance to murder, uh, we're, uh, we're, not, uh, we're not, not ethical but real, we will have a perception of it with all that uh, reverts uh, to the subjective, uh, the subjective in a perception. Um, so I mean, this is very interesting because it leads us to um, uh, uh, the, uh, the theme of, of the body uh, and of the feeling of the of the sensation in and out because to feel means actually to be caught in the other. But the sensation it is impossible for the self to be otherwise than being already in the other, as other in the same. Um, the inclusion of the self in the other means that the, pri the primordial movement of the corporal and sensitive subjectivity cannot be then uh, that of remaining but going towards the other. Uh, crossing the space, opening the space for uh, for this crossing. So to be a body, to have a body, means to means to, uh, to to transcend. Um, um, is uh, if to feel if to feel means to be to be caught in the other, and to be caught in the other means to transcend. Transcendence whose name um, um, transcendence becomes body, uh, the, corporal, uh, then the corporal subjectivity liberates itself from the weight of the being. So to be caught in the other, it also more to the, uh, to the stillness of to be in itself, or of the uh, derealization of the self, but offers, uh, offers to the self the possibility to liberate and to always be beyond what presents it, and precisely not to be a phenomenon. Um, well that's why the face is, uh, I, I prefer to use this, uh, so the face is the non-placed place, the reading of, uh, of this uh, marching or, or to the infinite. Um, because uh, the other is present in the face, as the face it announces itself among the phenomenon of the world, saying uh, this is for Levinas to say that the infinite announces itself to the phenomenon as a face. The face is not revealing by the manifestation's order, it is not a phenomenon or, or a substance. 
Nevertheless, we might say that uh, it is the sensitive and absolute singular con concreteness of an existence exposing the, vulner and the vul vulnerability of, the, of its skin. Um, on the other hand, Levinas evokes the, uh, um, the, uh, the um, irreputable abstracting of the face. Um, because the Vinos wants to underline the fact that the face cuts in a uh, perceptive horizon, any cultural or historical context, abstracting from the, wor uh, abstracting from the world context, any face is beyond uh, any conceptualization. Um, so, um, the, uh, the, uh, the new paradox or um, tension is imposing. The face is revealing from the invisible of otherwise than being and, and, uh, and uh, at the same time is the most vulner vulnerable existence. Uh, so the face deals with the visible. In the sense it is nothing outside the contact with the visible because it is right in this contact as a sample of phenomenality. Never capturing in the presence of the phenomenon and marking itself um, in phenomenality as a um, the racial and or traumatism against phenomenon or, or against phenomenon or trace, we'll say that now. Uh, I'm going to quote that now. The, the epiphany of the face is ethical. The struggle uh, with this face can treat it presupposes the transcendence, the transcendence of expression. So the, the nudity of the face is presented in totality of the infinity as a form of presence, as an immediately face-to-face -face characterized by the rightness that opens the authentic dimension of the language. While and otherwise the meaning of beyond, uh, beyond the essence, the essence is pointed on the, uh, you know, on the irreducibility and ambiguity of the face, ambiguity of the phenomenon, and of its perfection. Um, so in, uh, the, in the God and Infinity, the, vulner the vulnerability of the face is, pre uh, is presented as a core uh, for a uh, form order, uh, reversing in the, uh, in the injection of the infinite responsibility for the other. While in other ways, the being of the uh, unless is this hyperbolic movement, it uh, radicalized, uh, transmuting the, uh, the responsibility um, into obsession and uh, uh, persecution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. and being and beyond essence, because there, um, he mentioned the face is uh, with the skin. So I, I, I didn't quite catch up with that part. You, you talk about the skin, right? So. Um, yes, I, I talk about the skin. So the, the, uh, on, uh, the, the face, uh, mm. the face, it's one, uh, of course, it's one, it's the heart of the Nazian thinking. It's, it's a very important, uh, it's a very important uh, concept. And um, it's basically the theory of the subjectivity and of the language, and everything crosses there in, in, in the face. You cannot understand that not without, without the face. And, and um, the face is, is uh, it's an uh, ambiguity in itself because, uh, on, on the other hand, uh, it's, uh, it manifests uh, in uh, itself in the world. As a, as a presence, but it's it's not a phenomenon, so it, it's beyond phenomenology. We can, like, co uh, according to the Nazi, we can't have a phenomenology of the face. And here uh, there are two. Uh, there's also so the 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 the, uh, the face as um, as as skin as plasticity, if I say it. it uh, 
it's developed itself uh, in uh, in uh, time, and on the other hand, as trace uh, broke uh, broke the time, provokes a rupture uh, in the phenomenology, being beyond <laughs> the phenomenon, uh, uh, being beyond the phenomenology, being practically a, vo uh, a voice. Uh, um, um, that's why I call I call it the, the non-place because precisely the, the, the trace and the trace or the passage where the infinite comes uh, to um, um, uh, to give his commandment that is you, you shall not kill. So um, that's why it's also the biblical uh, uh, the biblical dimension. Beyond, beyond, phenomenal, uh, beyond phenomenological aspect. Well, let me ask, does uh, you wonder why so much religious language and philosophy? I, I don't think it's all that complicated. It's because religious language is the language of transcendence. So if you want to turn to the language that is, uh, has already been well developed to deal with the subject of transcendence, uh, the only danger is, of course, uh, the ontogeological interpretation of it. Uh, so he's always fighting against that. Um, uh, but once you break uh, religious language of ontotheology, it's, it's set up for transcendence. It's, it's made for. Whereas philosophical language, for the most part, is not. It's uh, made up for, for imminence, for identity. I don't want to make a cheap shot here, but this section that uh, uh, Raluca is commenting on ends with uh, two political uh, references. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cheap shot, but uh, Levinas does, uh, uh, on page 201, uh, said you cannot evade by silence the discourse of the, which uh, uh, the epiphany uh, that occurs as a phase opens up, uh, and then refers to Thrasymachus, right, who attempts not to speak. Because in the face of the face, there is no choice. One is already called upon. So that if one is silent, one's already silent as a response to the epiphany of the face and its obligation. Um, so that uh, it's true that Trisimachus could have kept his mouth shut, uh, but, but the fact that he doesn't is actually truer to his, to his position, finally. Uh, but he then loses. Um, and then the reference there from the Talmud to leave men without food is a fault that no circumstance attenuates. Mm -hmm. The distinction between the voluntary and the involuntary does not apply here, it says Rabbi Yochanan. If you look in the footnote, it's from a treatise of the Talmud called Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the legislative body of the, of the, ancient, of the Jews in, in, in ancient Israel. That was their Congress, that was their parliament. Um, so this is a this is a political ethical this is a political ethical statement that is this this is part of a discourse that, it, that does not separate um, the ethical from the political. Um, but I don't want to make this cheap shot. <laughs> we need a whole other seminar on that topic. Uh, but there's no evading of the face, the, the initial obligating character of the of the face. That's. That's, that's for sure. He also sent a lot of uh, literature that does that mean Levinas is writing a literature. He sent a lot of literature. Is, mm -hmm. Am I making a cheap shot? No, it's, it's much literature. Because you said literature. he said something about law, about in front Jewish things, I'm no. of him. But he also said about mm -hmm. a lot of Dostoevsky and uh, you know, literature. yeah, literature. So oh, literature. he said about the literature. I mean, Oh, sure. He says, I mean, he says his, one of his philosophical grounds is Russian literature. Yeah, but he's that, not that's not a cheap literature. shot. No, no, he, yeah. no, he, he's not. Well, you see, in Levinas, there is no distinction that you see. Plato initiates a discourse which claims the, 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 the goal of eliminating myth. Uh, and then he uses myths. And that discourse continues until you reach Hegel who claims to have succeeded in the concept of having eliminated myths. Mm -hmm. Now, Levinas will initiate a discourse that is the anti-mythological discourse par excellence, as he thinks of it. Mm -hmm. But remember, mythology occurs as the, as the border of the Iliad and the separating mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. So uh, the function of literature 
I think, uh, again, I don't want to refer too often to Lingus, but uh, the literature of Lingus is a good example, and the literature of Dostoevsky are good examples, uh, and, and this attempt that, that, that Jim was talking about of how can you make a Levinowsian film, uh, these are not useless projects. Uh, so, so um, Levinas is not aiming for the concept, yeah. right? On the other hand, he doesn't want to um, I turn into an idol mm -hmm. the language that wants to become a ceremony and turn into an idol. He wants to keep alive this, this, this trace of the same. So he will constantly redo and re say. He has no problem referring to the great the great literature of all civilizations. He says the great That's literature the of all civilizations. I'm saying if you say he has a political regime or whatever in him, because he cites someone who's talking about politics. So I'm saying if I'm just compared to say, oh, I'm well, saying like he's talking about literature. And I said I say you should develop that thought. You should yeah, develop okay. that thought. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. I think one way to uh, Listening to the last discussion, this is not deep trying yet. I also <laughs> felt like I wanted to become a bit constinian and wonder if there's a verbal dispute going on here. That is <laughs> real, yeah. Uh, because I think what you're saying here is really interesting because I think when you compare what he says about literature and what he says about politics, mm -hmm. these are these are institutions. They are the set. They are the you know that have to be that are constantly being reread, reinterpreted, and done. Through a kind of new saying, this is why you know if you, uh, if you take something like if you go back to uh, religion, ex, you know, the uh, reality of the shadow. Mm -hmm. um, the problem, once again, is you know if you um, separate um, art from ethics, mm -hmm. and this would be the this was your point if you yeah, separate yeah, yeah. politics. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the politics and ethics, and I don't think you, I actually don't think the two of you would disagree. Well, I'm not. I think develop this idea. Develop this. I have no problem with it. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't contradict the but, political dimension. But your point, once again, is, is the point of uh, Levinas' point is, you know, the point of what he's doing is not to create art. No. It's yeah. to, um, you know, art is something that uh, has to be revivified by ethics. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Like, it's not for create, creating a new institution. It's not for that. So that's what. Oh, absolutely. It is so to create new institutions. Or just it is. Okay. It is. Well, why, why don't we say it is to yeah, I, I won't relent on that. I will not relent on that. Uh, but, 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 I mean, is, for you, instance, if you, you can at least get closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But you I, could revivify institutions. I'm thinking, you know, it, it's an issue. Let me make another point from Judaism. Judaism has within itself, like every religion does, um, what it would like uh, for the whole world, right? I mean, it certainly has a very stringent system of, uh, of obligations and responsibilities for Jews as members of the Jewish community. But uh, it's fully aware that uh, the Jewish community is just one amongst many communities. It does not expect the whole world to become Jewish. Uh, it's not that sort of religion. But what it does speak about uh, responsibilities of humans as humans. And uh, it has what they call the Noahide laws, the laws of Noah. The rabbis derived this. If you tried to find it in the discussion of Noah in the Bible, you would never find it. And yet, if you go to you know Jewish Sunday school, they'll, they'll try to convince you, oh yes, this is coming from the text. Uh, it, it, it's a hermeneutic uh, uh, play. And the, the, as you get older, the more advanced in Jewish studies, the rabbis know that too. So uh, the, the basic laws for all of humanity are the ones you would expect. Don't murder, don't uh, steal, uh, uh, don't uh, commit adultery. Uh, very interesting, one is uh, don't harm animals. Isn't that interesting? That's one of the universal rules. Um, but one of the universal rules also is, um, for all humanity, is that should have a system of justice. Everyone should have a system of justice. And uh, uh, you know the story of, uh, of uh, Dina, the, the sister of, of the twelve brothers, of, of the sons of uh, uh, Jacob, who gets uh, raped uh, by uh, the, the, the prince of Shechem, and uh, uh, one of the Jews, the, the two the Jewish brothers, go in and they say, "Wow!" And, and, and these people from Shechem want want the Jewish property, and there's a big negotiation. If you circumcise yourself, well, well and then he wants to marry the girl. He wants to marry the girl, make the thing right, and. Um, um, uh, they make this negotiation, and then what do they do? They go in and kill them all. <laughs> after they circumcise. After they circumcise. <laughs> they go in and kill them all. You know, and it's like, 
in a typical way, every religion makes the bad things somehow look good. Uh, thank God Judaism was also willing to make, allow the bad things to look bad. Uh, that's, that's one of its attributes uh, in its own history. But in this case, how do they make it look good? How do they pretend that that was a good thing? They answered by saying, the Shechemites did not have a system of justice. Therefore, you don't have to treat them as, as righteous people. These, are, these people are inhuman people. It's like the, it's like the people of Sodom who were, who were inhospitable. Right? Now, that's just a rationalization. Uh, everyone is aware there was a brutal response to it. Uh, well, it was a rape, but it, but it was a brutal response. Um, so I'm saying that uh, 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 the upshot is, uh, is the upshot. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, oh, the institution yeah. of justice. Oh, that was the point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that at least, the, thank you very much, from the Jewish tradition anyway. And I'm not saying that Levinas is speaking, uh, he's not imposing his view as a Jew, but as someone thinking about justice, Levinas has no doubt that you cannot have justice with just institutions. They will, that is, remember he says with, that morality without justice is sentimentality. Uh, in, and the story that's actually more definitive in the Hebrew Bible is the story of Moses, who spends his whole day in the desert in front of a line of thousands of people who are coming to him to uh, adjudicate cases. And uh, Jethro, Jethro, who is not Jewish, comes to him and says, what are you doing? You need to institute a system of justice. Set up a judge for every hundred people. Set up a judge for every thousand people, and if they can't figure out the cases, those come to you. And Lois Moses is brilliant. And they set up this hierarchical system of justice. And that's coming from the non-Jewish world. Um, so I have no problem saying that Levinas insists that the hard work of responsibility is to create the institution. Like the content, he said that we need, okay, he stopped there, we need it. And he, he doesn't talk about how to or... Well, he doesn't want to be a fool like John Rawls. I mean, we've, 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 we, there's a, there's a well-established body, there's a well-established body of legal literature. He doesn't want to be a fool. I think it's, it's about him. He doesn't want to give it to him. It's, it's not, not his work. work. It's not his work. Right. Right. So that's what we're yeah. talking about. A political theory is not his work. Not his no, this is what we'll see all the time. But I'm saying it's a political philosophy. On the basis of this political philosophy, we can understand all the work that, that has been done in legal thought, in the philosophy of law, in, and the project of setting up a just state. It's just that Levinas is one person. He can't do all things at once. He, for example, he had no standing as a rabbinic authority. He knew that. He didn't pretend that he did. He did not develop, he didn't spend a whole lot of his career working out the sorts of things that you think, oh, this is what a political, I'm saying that it's still a political philosophy. Uh, just to get back to Raluca's paper. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And we have 10 minutes to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was wondering, uh, page, you quoted Levinas at the bottom of page 195. Uh, no, hold it. Yeah, toward the bottom of page 195. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the sentence, the former structure of language thereby announces the ethical inviolability of the other without any odor of the numinous and the holy. Um, remember that? Yes, yeah, yeah, by the way. Uh, that's a pretty rich paper. I think you'd have to read it. <laughs> Your paper was a very rich paper. And I think you'd have to read it to get everything that's in that. But I was wondering, when you, when you refer to the holy here, because there's, it seems to me that there's a kind of strange use here. Uh, he's using it differently here than he does, say, in religious, religion or adult, uh, and adults, uh, religion for adults, when he makes the distinction between religion, between the holy and the sacred. In that case, the holy is the ethical. Here he's referring to the holy kind of the way he does it as a sacred there, as Rudolf Otto's Das Heilige, right? That uh, it's the numinous, because he wants to say it's without any odor of the numinous or the holiness, which is this kind of, uh, you know, Otto was an you know, early phenomenologist of religion, but the, the point he's making is that the holy is the mysterium tremendum and et fascinans, you know, the, uh, the, the incredible power of the holy, which, makes, which is a lot more like you know, what we're running into when you're here later talking about being. But I, I, and I'm not sure I, I understand how you were reading it there. Uh, yes, okay, so basically, um, I, I, I don't know, I can't say because <laughs> sure, for me, the, the, uh, the holiness, um, 
The Ignatian point is, can open uh, that research maybe to a transhumanist and a trans-religious uh, uh, research path? Uh, that it's a universal path. But the holiness uh, for me, um, I mean, in the interview when Ignatius was uh, um, asked what is, what do you, uh, what do you mean by by holy? What is holiness? He said um, he, he says that. Uh, um, holiness uh, is the um, recognition of the of the ethics. Yeah, but I don't think so, that's the and, way uh, it's using the, it here. Yeah, it's, it's, um, here is kind of the neg negation. Kind yeah, of this is a negative. Yeah, yeah it's quite a reference to the whole, to the whole yeah. of holiness here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, and uh, basically, um, that's what, what I'm uh, uh, what, I, what I'm uh, what I'm trying to. Uh, uh, to say that basically the, 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 to be the holiness it's it's the subjectivity un understood as to uh, total openness and hospitality to the other it's this as um, precisely uh, to I say uh, as a disposed uh, eye as, a, uh, as, I, as an eye always uh, that suffers as is in, tra uh, in trauma uh, in the trauma, sorry, uh, because he is the he is the other. He responds com constantly uh, to the other, and the commandment and the, the ethics. Uh, we all know that for uh, for for the Nas, it comes from the immemorial. That is something that uh, the beyond conscious, beyond conscious, beyond the beyond the uh, beyond the. Uh, beyond the, uh, before uh, the, uh, the, uh, the consciousness and the, the, the cogito and uh, in intentionality. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I could uh, <laughs> open, but I, I can't, I can't see because I, I don't want to give a, a solution to say that this is... Uh, uh, the word holiness, which is there from the start, it, 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 it becomes increasingly, increasingly appears toward the end. Um, and otherwise in being, it becomes more prominent, and it is writings after otherwise in being. It comes to me, patience, that, that hope that has no actual ground uh, for a just society. So a good sample would be on page 162 of Otherwise in Being, when he says to those people who don't have the book, uh, I'll read it, and I'll read it anyway, for those people who do, page 162, about 10 lines down, when he talks about illaity, and remember the final sense of illaity is justice, illaity overflows both cognition and the enigma through the, uh, uh, which the infinite leaves a trace in cognition. It's distance from a theme, it's reclusion, it's holiness, is not its way to affect its being since its past is anachronous, as, as, as Luke was pointing out, and anarchic leaving a trace which is not the trace of any presence, but is its glory, and he, again this term glory, is a religious term, quite different that it's its splendor somehow without any visibility, uh, quite different from being and knowing. It makes the word God, which he very rarely uses, be pronounced without letting divinity in quotes, right, the, the, the sacred, um, uh, be said. Um, and, 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 and this is where he says that great thing, philosophy is the wisdom of love at the service of love, at the end of that paragraph, that beautiful line that Burgrave uses as his title. And, and you, you, you will find it increasingly when he talks, um, he says like, well actually, I'm going to take another cheap shot, sorry, go back to 159, because you asked for a citation. Justice, society, the state, and its institutions, exchanges, and work are comprehensible out of proximity. Of course, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Justice. It's not, it doesn't mean that he, he can do it. Justice he is can't. necessary, a comparison, coexistence, contemporaneousness, assembly, order, thematization, the visibility of faces, intentionality, intellect, intentionality, uh, a system, and thence co presence on an equal footing as before a court of justice. Um, it's all over. Not developed as you, would, as you normally have seen in people who claim to be philosophers of, uh, political philosophers or philosophers of law, uh, but we're talking about a fundamental political philosophy here, so he's not going to fill in the spaces. But I think the word holiness increasingly is the term he uses for uh, the patience for justice. 
because it's one of the most, probably the most irrational thing in the world you can imagine, probably the most irrational world thing in the world you can imagine yes. is the patience for justice. It's yeah. faith. And, uh, right, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hope, it's a trust. Yeah. They're pretty just, yeah. 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 That's not political. Uh, that's it. I want to say, uh, from, uh, yeah, I want to say please, something please. about uh, the, the colonists, uh, if I, I remember now. Holy uh, in, uh, I think that in Jew, uh, it means uh, yeah. uh, what is separ separ uh, separated and uh, uh, from, uh, from, from the purity uh, of God, what is separated from uh, ah, I know from what you're God. referring to. I know um, what it, yeah. You're referring to... Um, One of the greatest commentators in all of Judaism happens to be French. So, of course, Levinas is going to love that. Okay. And uh, uh, okay. Rashi, right? The 11th, uh, 12th century French commentator on the Hebrew Bible. And his definition of holiness is what you've just said. Okay. Rashi. Um, I, I, yeah. that in a, yes. Uh, and he defines the holy as separation. Of the yes. pure from and the impure, like the separation. right? Oh, separation, yes, separation, pure from impure. And um, well, I, I think that uh, Levinas uh, takes this term, so maybe this san the holiness, the sanctity, is uh, the absolute separation um, uh, from the from the immanence, so the non-contamination yeah. um, with the with the immanence. So it's an extreme sense, the uh, most extreme sense of transcendence. But at the same time, it brings the signification in the immanence, but. In, uh, your inner phenomenality, but the signification who uh, doesn't belong uh, to the to the knowledge uh, right. or uh, to the connaissance knowledge knowledge cognition yes and I think he tends to reserve it for the for the justice as the most extreme form of, of transcendence. Yeah, not and not not for sale, but the, 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 all the others behind the other. Yeah, yeah. The thing that calls you most out into the unknown, as it were. Yes. Now, please, make, and then we'll take a break. Make your comments so no one leaves will answer. Absolutely not political. Okay, sure. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the, the holiness in uh, the Vinas understanding is very close to time of valorship. Um, that it seems to me Levinas translated it into French, yeah? No, no, he wrote the no. preface to the French preface, translation. Okay, yeah. but uh, it seems to me it's very close to it. Uh, but uh, it's another Lithuanian reference. Uh, uh, the, 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 the greatest rabbi of Vilnius of this town, the greatest Hayes. rabbi in this town, was a guy Not named Elijah, Rabbi Elijah, and Rabbi Elijah uh, was a very reclusive uh, genius. Uh, one of the greatest geniuses in all Jewish history. Everything in Jewish history that was written, he had memorized. He, it was frightening. Uh, he refused to hold any community he positions. He just sat and studied, and people would come to him, and he would have very small study groups. Uh, he actually lived very close to here. There's a sculpture in town to him. One member of his small circle of disciples was this person named Chaim. It was perhaps, who knows, one of, I mean, probably one of his leading students. And uh, Chaim of Velo went to a town in Lithuania, as the Jews conceived it, called Velozhin, which is now in Belarus, which is where Igor is from. And he established uh, a yeshiva there. Uh, but uh, he also left a book behind, uh, and uh, uh, this book is still studied in, in yeshivas. And uh, when it was translated into French, Levinas wrote an introduction to it. And um, he interprets, as, as Levinas does, this is his genius. Uh, so he then interprets this uh, Rabbi Chaim of Elosian in this uh, ethical way. Uh, and he teases out of him uh, the cosmic significance of human ethical behavior. Now, probably Chaim of Elosian was unaware of this. But uh, uh, after you read Levinas, you, you think, who knows if he was aware of it? Uh, uh, it was a brilliant reading of it. So this is this is what, yeah. yeah. But that, that's only 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 one remark. The other remark is uh, regarding the uh, face of visage. Um, it seems to me that the uh, visage is more ancient French term. It's more ancient, and le visage um, definitely includes 
in my view. Definitely Q includes everything like skin, etc., etc., etc. So, le visage le visible. Uh, and um, that's, uh, if I understand, if I understood Richard properly, he said uh, just a few minutes ago about mythological discourse of Levinas, yeah? So it seems to me... Anti-mythological. Mythological? Mythological. Yes, I said yeah. mythological. Right, the anti-mythological. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, uh, the same uh, problem is in Talmudic text, because uh, in Talmudic text, especially Abed Azahar, there is no uh, problem with the visuality of the face, etc. Et so there is no problem of um, visuality uh, at material level. And uh, it seems to me that Levinas speaks, so what he speaks about, Le visage, le he speaks about uh, visible, not invisible, but visible. He speaks about skin, eyes, etc. And then uh, these visible traits disappear into invisible. And the same uh, development is in the Olympic text, let's yes. say, in the from visible to the invisible, because we connect, uh, if we remember Abad in worship, we connect with that is invisible okay, inside I, visible. So visible I, presence. I, I, if I didn't say that the, the face is it's, it's invisible. Besides that, I try to uh, underline that it's say, at the limit, maybe in between at the visible and the invisible. And yeah. a dialogue with the Talmudic writings cannot be avoided in order to... <laughs> it's just <laughs> a useful, useful uh, dialogue. Or useful, yeah. at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a useful, yeah, it's not to, necessary. Also, if people forget, um, Levinas had read Rosenzweig's book, The Star of Redemption. Uh, and in The Star of Redemption, there's an image of a, a face. Uh, the face is, it plays a role. Uh, I don't want to be advertising, but there's a chapter in my first book on the face in Rosenzweig. And we'll see some comparisons with the face in Levinas. Uh, but this, uh, this is not central to Rosenzweig. Uh, and it has a very different sense than it does for Levinas. Uh, there's, once you get into the Jewish tradition, you never get out. So, you know, maybe it's just a resource, I would think. Yeah. Um, they call it an ocean. Why don't we take a break, and uh, we'll come back in about 10 minutes, and then we'll hear from Victor.